Go get a refreshment, get some popcorn. You're going to be here for a while on this one. But what we're going to do, we're going to talk about these states that we focus on, Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. We're going to start with elk, and I'm going to put mule deer in here. And then we're going to put pronghorn in there. I'm going to give you ideas of a short term, which is zero to four years, a midterm, five to nine years, or a long-term goal for each state and then once we do this, I'm going to give you my thoughts of where the greatest value is for your money. We're going to start with Arizona. Everyone says there's no way you can go hunt elk in Arizona for anything other than double digit points. You're wrong. Go look it up. They got this thing called limited opportunity hunts. They have late archery. Marcus did that this year. He said he'd never do it again. That's what he texts me when he's down there. Now he's looking at the odds, seeing, well, how can I go do this again with just my one loyalty point? So then we got the midterm stuff. This is going to be late rifle. And I'm talking about non-residents here. If you're a resident, this late rifle could be moved over here. And then you get over here and you got the great archery hunts. You got some early muzzleloader hunts. And you got what I'll call, well, probably early or premium rifle. So with Arizona, you got quite a few options in front of you. Then we go to Colorado, you got over the counter. You got a lot of places where you can apply for a limited entry tag in, oh, quite a few units. You can get the first rifle limited entry. I got it with three points in a really good, good unit and a good tag. And then you get over here and these are going to be limited entry. I wonder if I can just say LE and people will know. They don't think I'll mean law enforcement or something, I hope. So, and then over here, just by choosing some weapons types of say archery, and muzzleloader, you can get some archery and muzzleloader tags in units with this many points that would put you over here for you know, a rifle tag. So Colorado, if you're gonna do the limited entry stuff, they've had their point system, it's a true preference point system. They've had it in place for, I think 1988, something like that. So over here, you're talking about the areas up in the northwestern part of the state. Some of the western or southwest units. You don't have to be Einstein to know which units are the high demand because they put out the demand report. I just go to Go Hunt, go to Filtering 2.0 or go to the draw odds and, it, and it's way easier that way. But anyhow, you have every option in Colorado. Short, mid, and long term. Then we get to Idaho, and when you get to Idaho, you got to be on the ball the last couple of years, right? So we'll call it, I'm going to call it general. We used to call it over the counter, but now that they've constricted or, or changed how they do it for non residents, I'm just going to call it a general tag. Now, here they've got some controlled hunts, they call it. That, that's Idaho's term for limited entry, is controlled hunt. And most of the ones that you can draw are gonna be archery or muzzleloader. And the reason in Idaho is they've really got a lot of constraints on what you can use for certain types of equipment in Idaho for muzzleloader. And then out here, you know, they've got some really high demand, really good hunts. But if you're a non-resident, they don't have a point system. So you're just going on what your odds are. You're going to be applying for a long time to draw some of their super, super high quality hunts. Uh, and those hunts are usually the ones in the southern or southwest portion of the state. Now, Montana, again, you're, if you want the general tag, you should draw that as a non-resident. Some people are lucky they draw drawn that 25% portion, the random portion, year after year after year. 
But even with the point system, you should draw somewhere in here. Over here, five to nine years, these are both gonna be your limited entry tags. And this is probably gonna be, your likelihood is some of the limited entry archery tags. The limited entry rifle tags, most of those for non-residents are gonna be 10 plus years. So if you're looking for some of the units in Eastern, Central, Southeastern Montana, you're looking at 10 plus years most, most times. Our limited entry tags in Montana are on a bonus point system. So you could draw right away, but your odds are super, super slim. So to get out there where you have a reasonable chance, you're looking at 10 plus years. New Mexico, we get to another state that uh, doesn't have a point system and they have no general tags. So here, your odds of drawing zero to four years are the first or early archery hunts in the low demand units. You get the high demand units over in Socorro County, Katrin County, Otero County. You're not even gonna, you're not gonna draw those first archery tags there. Five to nine years, maybe you'll draw a second archery tag if you're, if you're lucky. And there's some rifle tags, we'll call them the low demand again, even some of those. So you think about this, your odds have got to be somewhere between 10 and 20% or your probability to kind of fall in this category. So again, these are going to be the low demand rifle tags. Over here, this is going to be some of the rifle or most of the rifle and the premium muzzle loader and premium archery. And by that, everyone knows about the Gila. They know about some of the places next to the, the tribal lands and stuff like that. So a lot of your stuff in New Mexico is probably gonna be over there. And then we got Utah. And then they, a lot of people don't really think about it. They almost changed it this year. They're over the counter and then they have a lot of spike archery stuff. Um, then you, you, you get past that and last year they implemented some new hunt called HAMS, handgun, archery, muzzleloader, shotgun. I looked at those and for a non-resident, even those odds, they're more like this nine years instead of five years, but I'm going to put them there. They probably deserve to be right over here. And then in Utah, I don't care if it's limited entry archery, muzzle loader, rifle, whatever, pretty much any limited entry hunt in Utah, unless you really get some good luck, if you're just working on your points, going to be out there past 10 years. So, and then we get to Wyoming. Wyoming wants everybody to have something. They're like Arizona. Arizona and Wyoming, there's something for everyone. And I love it. And you'll see that when I put the value score here. You should draw a general tag in Wyoming. I mean, you look at your probability that in zero to four years, with the fact that 25% of the tags are issued randomly, the fact there's a lot of general tags, you should hopefully draw every, you know, zero to four years. Then you get over here and I'll call them, I mean, there's some limited entry hunts, both right, well, I'm just gonna say rifle because they don't, Wyoming doesn't really have, I should just say limited entry for anything. Now, I shouldn't make a distinction because you just got to look at the, the draw demand. And these are going to be some of your, oh, uh, I mean, I used to say, <laughs> I used to say central Wyoming and other stuff, but those are starting to move out here also. So these are also going to be your limited entry tags. And Again, you can look at certain units. I would say 
if you get over to like the southwest corner of Wyoming, those are going to be over here. The ones around Cody and Yellowstone Park where you're hunting migrating out, those are going to be over here. In the Bighorns, maybe some of those will be in here. Central Wyoming, some of those will be in here. So you just have to look and see. But the point of this is, oh, I forgot a state. I knew I forgot one. Nevada. And here's the reason I forgot it. In Nevada, you're kidding yourself if you think you got a short-term plan or a mid-term plan. This is where you have a chance in Nevada. And as quick as I say this, somebody's going to say, yeah, but I drew with two points. You know what? You can. But if you look at any sort of reasonable probabilities, Nevada, this is just like, okay, I'm making a donation. I'm making another donation. Okay, this is mostly a donation, but I might actually win something. That's why I forgot Nevada. I'm like, how could I forget that? So you look at all this, and when you look at things like point systems, upfront costs, total cost between application fees and, and uh, transaction fees and everything else, if I had to value the top three, it's gonna be a toss up. I'm gonna say Arizona is 1A, just because these are really, really good hunts. And Wyoming is 1B. I mean, they're so close, I can't hardly make a distinction between them. And even though you don't get any points or anything, my third choice would be New Mexico. Only a $65 upfront cost for that. And if you draw, you're going to have lots of public land. You're going to have a really, really good hunt. Now, if you just wanted to hunt elk every year or you know, you're just in the short term mode. I'm going to focus on Colorado, Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. I'm going to change this. Now we're going to get rid of elk here. And we're going to make this mule deer. Arizona, if you want a short term or a mid term plan, your only chance is one of the archery limited entry. They're pretty much now mostly limited entry. Uh, if the drought comes back and the harvest rates go back down, some of these might go back to over the counter. But here, any of the rifle or muzzle loader, you're talking out there. And a lot of people here think about the strip which is 13A and B. A lot of people think about the Kaibab. I'm not sure if I'm spelling this right, which is all of units 12. <laughs> it's gonna take a long time. Even the early rifle on the Kaibab for non-residents is gonna take a long time. Now, here we get to Colorado. So I can just, without even saying anything further, we're gonna put a one next to Colorado for value for mule deer. If you only apply for mule deer in one state, make it Colorado. They got it figured out. Absolutely. So here, short is archery, some of their muzzleloader hunts, and some of their second rifle hunts. So they have first, second, third, and fourth rifle in Colorado. Over here, um, these are mostly going to be second rifle, but again, you could almost put some archery and muzzleloader over there. Um, and there's probably a couple third rifle, not a lot, but I'm going to put a little bit of a down arrow there. So the lower end third rifle and maybe the upper end second rifle. And then you get out here, and we're talking third rifle, the high end third rifle hunts are gonna be out here, fourth rifle. 
And then they have some early rifle up in the super high alpine. Those are gonna take you more than 10 points. Colorado has a full on point, preference point system, but there are bucks taken in units with zero points, one point, two point, every year that are just phenomenal bucks. Idaho, general. Idaho has some really good deer hunting. It's too bad they had that winter that they had in 2016, 17. And then two years later, another tough winter because that general tag was really, really good. And maybe it'll be really good again someday. Here are these controlled hunts. No, why they call them controlled, but they do. They have some good archery controlled hunts. Most of the rifle controlled hunts are gonna be out here as far as your probability. Your probability is less than 10% in Idaho for a rifle and even a lot of their muzzleloader. So you could maybe sneak a muzzleloader hunt in there, but really, really good. New Mexico, here you're mostly looking for archery hunts in what I'll say outside of the northwest parts of the state. Um, the mid, again, some archery, some muzzleloader. Over here, up in northwest Colorado or northwest uh, New Mexico, there's a bunch of migratory hunts that are deer coming out of Colorado. Those ones are gonna take you a long time to draw. <clears throat> Maybe you'll look out because there are there is no point system, but probability says, all right, if it's 10 plus years, your odds are less than 10%. That's what you're gonna be looking at in New Mexico. <clears throat> Utah, they have a general tag for residents and non-residents, but you have to draw this general tag and it uses preference points. Everything else in Utah uses bonus points. So I'm not sure why Utah came up with that strategy, but they did. So out here, it's possible Utah's deer demand is moving over here where once you get out of the general units, your limited entry muzzleloader, there's some of those and there's a few limited entry archery that maybe you have a 10 to 20 percent chance but over here <clears throat> you're talking most of them are going to be i don't care if it's archery muzzle loader or rifle in utah very few non-resident hunts have odds better than 10 percent and then we got wyoming <clears throat> Wyoming, I'll say, has some great mule deer hunting, but like Idaho, they got creamed in the winter of 2016-17 and two years later. So numbers are way down in Wyoming. But if you're a non-resident, we have to apply by region or limited entry unit. So regions other than G and H you should be able to draw with zero to four points. So then we get over here and maybe someday region G is gonna take more than nine points. <laughs> it's, it is just like, whew. if you, I, I would almost start here and say, if you got enough points, regions G and H are really good, but otherwise you're gonna be over here. And then you look at out here, their limited entry rifle, pretty much any of them that are late October, which most of them are, or early November, which a couple of them are. Those are going to be, they're gonna take max or close to max points. And right now, I think going into this year, it's gonna be 16 is maximum points, so. Pretty soon I'm gonna to have to add a column that says ancient instead of just long, like close to death, nursing home or something, you know. <laughs> it's just how these point systems are working. So 
Then we have Nevada. I'm not going to forget about Nevada when it comes to mule deer because it's really good. Archery. I know some of you are going to say, those archery hunts suck. Newberg, you go down there and you don't ever shoot anything. You're right, I don't. But that's because I'm a pretty crappy archery mule deer hunter. But you can go. Look, there's, there's leftover tags every year in some units. But if you get out here, I would say that in Nevada, you're probably thinking, hmm, some of the archery, some of the, most of the muzzle loader, and some of the early rifle, the less demand, lower demand, early rifle. But you get out here and most of the higher demand rifle, you better have a lot of points. You better have more than 10 points to think you got reasonable probability. But if you draw in Nevada, it's 80 some percent public land. So who doesn't want to draw in Nevada? I do. Uh, so now value, I already told you that value number one is surely going to be Colorado. Value number two, Wyoming. I mean, look at Wyoming. Wyoming was 1B for elk and number two for mule deer. And wait till you see pronghorn. And you're, you're wondering why the Fresh Tracks office might relocate to Wyoming someday. So then, drum rolls, brrr, number three. Some of you people are gonna say I'm off my rock here. But it's a tie. And the reason that I say it's a tie is Utah has really good mule deer hunting. Maybe not as good as Nevada, but they give away more general tags to non-residents than Nevada does. So if I had to, if you said, all right, you got to pick between Utah and Nevada. Hmm. <laughs> I'll give Nevada that. I'm biased, I went to college there. So I've, I've probably stomped every corner of Nevada more than once. You didn't do Montana. I didn't do Montana? No. That's because Montana sucks. Montana is a short-term option. It's your general tag. But I'm just here to tell you, if you're looking for any age class for deer, Montana is not the place to come. We hate mule deer here, we shoot them. I, I'm not kidding. There used to be a motto, uh, Dr. Mackey, who's since passed, he would say to have more mule deer, you got to shoot more mule deer. And maybe at his time back in the 70s, that was the case, but it's not the case anymore. So here, your limited entry, there's a few that I don't even think we have any limited entry options that are in there. I'm just going to cross that out. We don't have any. And then all of our other limited entry options are way out here. So, as far as value, I'm giving Montana like a D minus. New Mexico, I'll give them a C. I already told you Utah is tied for three. Idaho, I'm going to give kind of a B. Arizona, I'm going to give a B minus because you might luck out and draw one of those. But so we got one species left, one that I get pretty excited about. I've hunted pronghorn in all of these states except I haven't hunted them in Idaho. That's it. I I, I might change my mind on how I rank some of these here. This is. I, I can't remember what the symbol is for empty set. Forget it. I'm, I'm going to start blocking out some of these. There's some of these where you are just smoking something if you think that you're going antelope hunting in some of these states in zero to four years. So we got that out of the way. Arizona's easy. For pretty much any pronghorn tag, I don't care if it's the easiest to draw pronghorn tag or the hardest to draw, you're gonna be as gray as I am before you might finally draw. 
I drew an archery tag there with 16 points and it was so much fun, but I didn't get one. Now Colorado, there's a lot of, I think some of them are still over the counter for archery. Here there are a few rifle, some muzzleloader, and some archery for sure that you can get with that many points. And then out here, some of the best and highest demand rifle tags might put you out there where you need more than 10 points. Idaho, again, they have some places where you can draw an over-the-counter. I think it's, there's like two units where archery is like guaranteed almost. So over here, you got some archery and some muzzle loader and Oh, again, I'm dropping down into Montana here. I must be trying to hide Montana from everything. That's not by design, folks. That's a function of how little it enters my mind. Uh, out here in Idaho, pretty much any rifle hunt for a non-resident, your odds are less than 10%. <clears throat> Montana, <clears throat> we do have what's called the 900 archery tag. As a non-resident, you'll probably draw that less than in four or five years. Out here, five to nine years, you're probably, these are going to be your rifle tags, the lower demand rifle tags. And out here, we have a couple, very few higher demand rifle tags. Montana, kind of like our mule deer, we shoot the bejeebers out of antelope. If you want to see a scared animal, you should see a Montana antelope in rifle season. I don't know how they don't run themselves to death. So, all right, let's look at New Mexico. Before New Mexico changed this and broke everything into so many different hunt codes, we only get 6% of self-guided non-residents. Well, they used to have 30 tags in a hunt code. Well, that means we'd get two of those tags. Well, now they broke it into three hunts with 10 tags and we don't get any of them. The few units that have enough tags for a non-resident to draw, I don't care what, whether you like to hunt archery, rifle, or muzzleloader, your odds in New Mexico are less than 10%, which is unfortunate because man, Got some really good antelope hunting, but that's life. Uh, Utah, it's not a real high demand species in Utah because there's so much focus on their deer and elk. So the archery and muzzleloader, there's a few that you might be in the running there. Here, probably gonna be strictly the muzzleloader tags out here almost all of the rifle tags that would interest you are going to be 10 plus years. All right, I made you wait a while, but you don't have to wait any longer to know that the number one state for quality, quantity, value when it comes to pronghorn is the cowboy state. If you're only going to apply for pronghorn in one state, make it Wyoming. Really don't apply. Leave tags for me. <laughs> I love that place, man. I, it, any of my friends who draw Wyoming pronghorn tag, they know if they call me, I'm going to somehow worm my way in on that hunt. I just, uh, I just love doing it. So there's some zero to four point units in eastern or central Wyoming. The downside is access is going to be your challenge. And there used to be a ton of units here, but these units here are mostly the central Wyoming units. And these ones out here anymore are the Red Desert. The Red Desert, I would say, is anything kind of west of Rollins, Green River, Rock Spring, all that country over there, south of Riverton. It's not technically the Red Desert, but you kind of know what I mean. Nevada. 
I wish that I could tell you that there was some shortcut, easy way in Nevada, but I don't see any. Maybe you could luck out. I'm going to, in real small, faint letters, put archery there. But don't get your hopes up. Over here, yeah, archery or muzzleloader, you might have in some of the lower demand units. So I'm going to put a down arrow, which means low demand. And then over here is any of the rifle tags, some of the higher demand archery. You're looking at, you're going to be at it for more than 10 years. So when I look at my value equation, New Mexico used to be right here, but then they changed everything and it just is a bummer. I mean, it's such great antelope hunting, but if you can't get a tag, I'm not put, I'm not giving it a score. My Nevada friends are really going to hate me for that. But I'm already applying for everything else in Nevada, so I'd be crazy not to apply in Nevada. So now I'm left with, all right, which are the others? And again, Arizona is kind of like New Mexico, you know? I may as well stand out on the street corner and wait for some stranger to give me a tag versus think I'm going to draw one. So I, I just, as much as I'd love to hunt there, neither of them are going to get the number three. Montana gets a C. Idaho gets a C. Maybe Colorado gets a C plus. Utah might get a B minus. I don't know. I guess if you follow that, Utah would be number three, but I... I don't know that any of them are worthy of a number three. But if you're applying in these states, by all means, you know, you, you already bought the non-refundable license here and here and here and here and here and here. So you may as well apply for pronghorn because if you're applying for mule deer or elk or sheep or something else, go do it. So there you have it, folks. You'll notice that of all the species, the one where most of it ends up in the 10 plus years is pronghorn. There aren't nearly as many short-term pronghorn solutions as there are elk or deer. But anyhow, value. Get the most value you can out of your investment and have a focus on what's my short-term, my mid-term, and my long-term, no matter what species because you will then be hunting more and sitting home less. Good luck.